Unbelievable that I hadn't played this since 2020. How could I resist for so long? I, I love this game so much. Hi everyone. I come to you today with a confession. Something that I just have to share because the love that I feel is just flooding my heart and I need to share this thing with you even though it's a shameful dark secret but I shouldn't be ashamed anymore. I've seen the light and I have to tell you Devil May Cry 2 is my favorite Devil May Cry game. No, my favorite game. And I tell you this, genuinely, with purest honesty, it's my favorite, favorite game of all time. I'm gonna show you why Devil May Cry 2 deserves more love. And I hope you two can open your hearts and realize what a beautiful game this truly is. Thank you for your understanding. Oh my god, look at him! I'm so excited! Oh my god! Oh, but the temptation. Who knows? It's gotta be. We gotta go with the original, you know? We gotta go with he. See, people talk a lot about seeing Cloud Strife's skin in HD. What about Dante's original orange peel? Oh my god. Look! Look at the- This is everything we have to look forward to. Everything. We could just do an entire opening intro breakdown, honestly. <laughs> when did I unlock that? I love that loading screen. I really want to get a massive canvas of it to have in the background sometime. But I have to restrain myself. Since past. <gasps> opening narration. With his third eye, can he see how much I love this game? Look at that explosive opening! It's so dynamic! All of these gunslinging, rooty tooty, shooty, sword slicey dicey. Bye bye, demon birdies. Amazing. And the coin, keep track of that. It will be so significant and symbolic at multiple points of the story. Very clever writing. Beautiful. Look at this, a guidepost for the hunters. And we get a full vision of this beautiful map. I love maps. Look at that jumping action straight away. This beautiful game, this masterpiece is showing you that you can jump. And it looks so good. The cape swish. So flowy. So elegant. I've seen a lot of people say, oh, why are we here? Well, fake fans, if you'd have read the light novel, like I obviously have because I love Devil May Cry 2 so much, why wouldn't I have read the light novel that explains why you're here? I'm not gonna tell it to you because you need to discover that joy for yourself. I won't spoil it. But also, why would you need to know specifically why he's here? He's demon hunting, obviously. Come on, get your brain worms into gear. You don't need an explanation. Maybe you what would have would have felt more comfortable if it had taken place in New York, like the original intention was. Well, here's the thing, you insensitive people. 9-11 happened not too long before this, and maybe it would have been pretty unsavory for audiences to see the Big Apple so rotten. Like they obviously wanted to go with this elegant, stylish, gothic imagery right here. Look at it. See, people didn't complain when there was that entire village in Resident Evil. I haven't played Resident Evil, but I have seen that brown village. The thing about the color brown as well is it has such symbolism. I think that really for this place that we're in, this ambiguous scenery, 
what we have is a really interesting, curious blend that makes you feel the heat of this place that we're in, as well as like adding a timelessness to it. Or not a timelessness, but a confused time. Again, if you'd read the light novel, you would know a little bit more about what I'm talking about. But either way, you don't have to. Oh my God, did you see that backflip? Did you see that? So dynamic. I think it really helped me keep a consistent combo there as well. Look, don't worry. That's such a comforting message to see frequently. There we go, see? Are you ready? Am I ready? I was not ready, but we'll start again and it'll say, don't worry. Again, haters, haters say that you can just shoot at everything, but then you're obviously not getting style points from that. So really? It's on them for not actually utilizing everything that the game is giving you in terms of a challenge? I don't understand it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Anyway, it's a shame the Isle of Vidimali is not real or else I would live there. I would live there. I would pack up and move, leave my old life. That's a really helpful guide. That is a really accessible, helpful visual guide because a lot of people like me aren't capable of perceiving things with their eyeballs. And no, no. Don't then trash talk me and say- You're clearly not saying, you're clearly not this very good at seeing with your eyeballs because you're saying this is a good game. Don't do that. See, I'm one step ahead of you. See, all of you, you're just not ready for showtime. Evidently. Anyway, if I could live in V de Mali, I would 100%. Okay, so you know, for Torchwood, for Doctor Who Torchwood, in Cardiff, there's a little um, vigil. There's a big memorial, big tribute to Yanto Jones. I, if I lived in Vida Mali, like my heart desires, because I love Devil May Cry 2 so much, I would 100% live there and I would 100% make a memorial to Lucia and Mantia. They're not dead, they just deserve something nice, I think, you know, something pretty. I've also got to say, I love this atmosphere, this, this ambient music. I think there's like a sadness to it. Unfortunately, we're in combat again, so we won't hear it for a sec. But this beautiful ambient music that plays when we're going through, it has this sorrow to it. Again, I think it's so clever and just really, really beautiful how it ties in with the themes that we don't entirely know of yet. It has a sense of foreboding, but not only foreboding, sorrow, a feeling of loss, mourning, and a little bit of despair. What does it indicate about the environment that we have found ourselves in? I would also like to remark upon the fact that the sound has really improved since the first game. The sound is great. This is why this is absolutely the first Devil May Cry title that I would introduce someone to if somebody came up to me and went, hey, You've played all those Devil May Cry games. Do you recommend I play them? Which should I start with? I will say Devil May Cry 2 is a much friendlier option for a new player to start with. I mean, the feedback. Look, he fell. And the sound of him falling and the cute little puffs of dust. Again, to really drive home that we are in a impoverished city that used to be something better than what it was perhaps, or definitely a bit more lively. Anyway, when we do get to shoot enemies again, you're gonna really feel satisfied being able to run around like this. The first game, I love it, you know? I love it. But unfortunately, Devil May Cry 2 is better than Devil May Cry 1 for this, for this reason, where you run around and you get that nice feedback. Oh my gosh, I can't believe my stylish average was a D. How did that happen? Because it's a hard game. Again, people will say that there isn't challenge. I think it's very challenging. I feel challenged right now. It's a challenge every time I have to talk about how much I love this game. Son of Sparta, we must...
must ask this favor of me. See, like there's that coin again. I will tell you a story about your father, son of Sparta. Her accent is so good. I'm so jealous. Anyway, as I was saying. So it's like as well, that brown, it really speaks to almost like this symbolism, like this once cute rural town where people probably had really nice flowers at their windows and stuff. It has been leached almost. Like the game is saying that greed, corporate greed is a parasite. And that is just so true. And look, haters will say, ooh, ugly brown, dull environments. We're already somewhere that's blue, actually. So, take that, haters. It's beautiful. Something I've got to say again as well regarding accessibility. You can just save right here. And I think that is so good. You know, this is still a very early action adventure game. They were still trying a lot of these things out. You gotta give respect for DMC2's place in the canon. I mean, again, because I love this game so much. Because I love this game so much, I would ask that you maybe open your heart and mind to the possibility of more than respect and maybe even love. Look at that freaking cape swishing. Look, when he does his hit, hit, yeah. The way his jacket moves around is actually so good and dynamic for the time. I think that this is really actually, really beautifully carrying on that legacy of really dynamic, responsive action adventure games that go move on to, you know, form the genre of hack and slash. I don't know how you could deny that for a moment. That this is part of that cannon. Look, so responsive. The game is very aerodynamic. The flips, they're not just for show. Running up that wall, running up that building. It actually makes way for so many possibilities. People will say that there's something like not really very interesting with the amulets going on as well. Nuh uh. This enables you to fly. Wow. That's so amazing. I love it. And there we go. Look, flying Dante and a little trail of jelly beans to light my way. Thank God. See, the massive improvements they made to the camera made that possible. Couldn't have done that before. They actually, they listened to the feedback is what they did. When people said, hey, it was kind of sucky that we couldn't play as Trish in the first game. You know what Devil May Cry did? Devil May Cry 2 went above and beyond to make it so that not only in this great sequel can you play as Lucia, our, our heroine of the game. You, if you can then beat the hard mode, can also play as Trish. See, they gave and gave only to not really receive. I hate that for them. Ow. I think if they had had Lucia and Dante missions back to back, the way they did with Dante and Nero, I think that is the one thing that could have really cemented what a great villain Argosax was. Like a really great introduction to more of the demon lore. Again, you know what? Haters will say, Oh, and in DMC2, they just wanted to replicate what DMC1 had and basically have the same story of like a she demon and an arch demon nemesis. Well, they didn't do that, did they? It is not the same. Again, we gotta talk about Lucia. Unbelievable that I hadn't played this since 2020. How could I resist for so long? I, I love this game so much, and I especially love. Lucia. It's really got great themes about the strength of found family. It's got such a great message of you are not what you came from. 
You know, Massier took her in, and again, this is why I get very emotional about their relationship. I love this piece of music. It reminds me a lot of Bayonetta, actually. I mean, I've said before about some things to do with the settings, the great big silver city, and the way that it was created in order to summon up a higher being in order to make our main villain more powerful in some way. So on one hand, you know, you have Jubilees and then you have Argus Axe. I really think this is a very spicy take. Haters will hate. Haters won't appreciate. But I think Kamiya saw a lot of elements in Devil May Cry 2 and when... What? I can do that better. Unfortunately, Devil May Cry 2 is obviously my favorite game ever, so... This is so sad. Like... Look at those glittery tears. Perfect. Perfect. It's that coin again. Anyway. Lucia and Bayonetta, they're very similar, you know? There is a clock tower as a great base, a great tropey base of environments. We have some flooded ruins. We've got a big old moth battle. That's not actually a setting, but I was very excited about that bit. But we do also have some catacombs, like I said, the massive clock tower, and our heroine. It's revealed that the big bad is actually our heroine's father creator, and we have to defeat him at the end. Because here's the thing as well. Lucia is actually the one who gets to finish off Arias herself. Score one for feminism. Girl power. Definitely my favorite game of all time. You know, it's just an opinion. God, I love this game so much. I, I love this game so much. And I've, I've played it back to front so many times. And, and that's, that's why I don't even have to concentrate here. Anyway. Lucia in Canticle 2 of Inferno in Divine Comedy. She is actually very, very symbolic. Oh no. I got too dragged up in symbolism. The symbolism is that she drags Dante out of the darkness. It's a real great girl power move, I think. And it's really great that they brought in another character from the greatest Bible fanfiction of all time. Like, I really appreciate that they managed to do that. Lucia is actually someone who symbolizes the light. She leads Dante out of darkness, figuratively and literally. And did you know that she's based on a real saint? Like, she's a real saint herself. She's like... Like I said, you know, Camilla must have seen some of the gold in this game and went on to create Bayonetta, but couldn't quite then do the job because you just can't match a heroine like Lucia. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Like, how far is this gonna go? I basically just said Bayonetta is worse than this piece of Sorry. I just, I just returned from my crops and I can confirm they are once again watered, all due to the love and joy that Devil May Cry 2, my favourite game, has brought me. Incidentally, my skin is also feeling clearer and my vision a little bit more sparkly. It's amazing. Anyway. Anyway. Am I winning? Of course I'm winning. I'm always winning when I'm playing my favorite flipping game in the world. You can't not win right now. You can't not win when you're playing Devil May Cry 2 and having the time of your life. You know what? You know when they wrote that song, Time of Your Life? They wrote it about Devil May Cry 2. They didn't know it. They didn't know how much something like this would mean to me. But this is how much it means. Again, you know, the thing with Lucia, the thing with her, she's so beautiful. 
I can't believe that they didn't end up including her in Devil May Cry 5 again, but that's just how committed she is. You know, she's another one of these heroines that has just such a great sense of responsibility. And that's why they didn't want to remove her from her origin city. They were like, she wouldn't do that. That is just not in her nature. So why would they do that? They had such a strong sense of concept and character design. Again, loyalty. Blood not being important. I mean, does it count as blood? Don't know, she's a demon, which is really cool. Again, that they did that. Oh no, I'm perishing. But wait, no, I'm not because again, the game is so accessible. I must have at some point put an item on. That means that I know exactly what I'm doing. Because again, I've played this so many times by now because it is my absolute favorite. Oh God, I've been swallowed. But you know what? It's not, it's not graphic. Again, another score for feminism. A lot of other games, I feel like they would have made this really graphic. But not this game. We got it. We got this. And again, what a girl power moment. In my favorite game, Devil May Cry 2. And we just dive straight into this cutscene. Everything is just as it was. The direction is impeccable. There she is, my mum, my raisin. Because she was raising me, my Lucia, for so many years. Both sides are heads. She has discovered the secret, the reveal. Tears. I told you, the coin so thematic like both sides are in fact the same kind of like how both sides of the story are the same when you play through both characters playing as hard mode dante you can then actually play as trish which they didn't let you do in the first game all that light all of her Let's own dress up in the most wonderful glossy lilac lipstick that we can find and a lovely bright cherry red wig Amazing, cause like... She's got a white cape. Dante's got white hair. He's got a red jacket. She's got red hair. I just, wow. It's actually so intelligent. It's so good. It makes me feel like I'm flying. Like how I feel every time that I accidentally cartwheel into a wall. And just start running up the side. Anyway, friends, remember what they say in Devil May Cry 2, there is no easy mode. There is no easy mode.